Our Firebird engine swap project is very slowly but surely coming along. And this time we're starting off with a crucially important job that I have been putting off and avoiding for quite a while. And that's the fuel pump. For carburetors, I'm not really a huge fan of electric pumps, but if you recall back when I got this engine, I was looking for a Gen 4 and ended up with a 5. So there's no provision there for a mechanical fuel pump, and I don't have a lot of options but to go electric. There's a lot of information, a lot of calculators and charts and all kinds of things online to try to figure out how much fuel you'll need for a certain engine setup. And when looking for something quiet, I actually bought this one first. This is one that kept coming up as a cheap, all around reasonable and quiet fuel pump, but it's only about 60 gallons per hour and some sources are telling me that that's perfectly fine for our application, but some places will tell you that that's inadequate. And just to be safe, I decided we would step it up to a 120 gallon per hour I went with this model because it has a built-in adjustable regulator, which is real nice. It's supposed to be quiet, though I saw some mixed reviews on that. Generally, it seems like people say this is much quieter than like a Holly Blue. And they actually sell a rebuild kit for the motor, which is really cool. The final reason I chose this one, I just got a good deal on it. Anyway, this is what we've ended up with to run our engine. Has to be mounted as low as possible near the gas tank. Uh, I think I know generally where to put it because there is a decent amount of space right in front of the gas tank where the factory exhaust system hung the muffler. As far as where to plummet, some number of years ago I replaced the sender in the gas tank and I figure the easiest way to get gas to the pump is just to cut into that line. Otherwise, we'd have to come all the way to this side of the gas tank and either loop a line back for a centrally mounted pump or mount it right here, which for a couple of reasons I decided not to do. So if we're going for a front of the tank mount, how are we going to hold it up there? You got it, this calls for a bracket. We're going to be mounting it to the same tabs that the exhaust is currently hanging off of. I assume these inner threaded holes used to be for a heat shield or something, but we're going to drill them out to 25 60 fourths which will let us use more of these polyurethane exhaust mounts to isolate the fuel pump bracket and hopefully farther reduce vibration and noise. That gives us two points of attachment, but we'll want at least one more for stability, so we'll drill up into this hollow area where the gas tank strap attaches and fish a bolt up in there just like we did for the mid-car exhaust hangers. Once we've got that tightened to the sheet steel, we'll add a bead of JB Weld for vibration resistance or something like that. And now that we have mounting points to work with, it's time to get building. The first parts we'll need to make are mounting pads to hold the polyurethane grommets and attach the fuel pump bracket to the body of the car. We're sanding all the paint off these 8th inch thick steel plates for exactly that purpose. These were salvaged from some disassembled server racks and should be just the right size to make what we need. We'll stack three plates together and after scribbling all over them, start drilling for the grommet. Once we're through, we'll separate the plates and use a step bit to bring them all the way up to 11 sixteenths. Those will get returned to their stack and bolted together so that we can cut them out all at once. It's not critically important that these be an exact match, but since we will be bending them up, it would certainly make things easier. Once those have been fully cut out and sanded together, as well as individually, we'll clamp them in the vise one at a time and bend the sides up. After hammering the trio into shape, here are the mounting tabs for our fuel pump bracket. With the grommet installed in each of those, we'll bolt all three to the body of the car and measure for the main tube. 24 and 7 eighths. Most of this bracket will be made out of the 16th of an inch thick half inch diameter square tubing, and with a piece of that cut to length and successfully test fit on the car, we'll go ahead and tack weld that main bar to the mounting tabs. Then we'll unbolt it and fully weld it. This is kind of what everything else is going to be built off of to mount the actual fuel pump. We're going to build a frame off of this, kind of a truss situation. And once we've figured out those dimensions, it's back to cutting. This piece of tubing will become the bottom of the bracket, and once everything is in place, we'll cut out the sides as well. We'll tack all that together and head back under the car for a test fit, which convinced me we needed another horizontal mounting bar, so we'll get that cut out and tacked into place. This seems like a sturdy setup and gives us lots of options, so let's get that fully welded, and once it's cooled down, bring it back under the car. 
with the bolts tight. I was pretty impressed by how sturdy it already was, but we should probably go ahead and add a third point of contact. After considering a few different options, I decided to go for a short attachment right up at the top, which may keep the whole thing less rigid and less likely to transmit vibration. Once we have that fully glued in place, we'll smooth everything over with the flap disc. Then, you guessed it, that'll get bolted back on. That's good. It still does have a little bit of movement, but like I'm really, really pushing on it. That's all it's got. We can try to figure out our uh, rock guard skid plate sort of deal. This is an angled 8th inch thick steel plate that came off of those generous server racks. And it's a bit on the heavy side, but with just a few modifications I'm sure we can make it serve our needs quite well. It's about time we sort out how to actually attach this pump to our bracket. This pump has a somewhat unusual diameter of 52 millimeters. And I just don't really care for the clamp that it came with. I looked online and found a bunch of this style of aluminum clamp. Unfortunately, most of these are 50 or 60 millimeters. This one happens to be a 50, and it's just too small. Which is why I also picked up a 60. To space it out a bit, I cut out more of those 8th inch rubber strips, the same ones we used to mount the radiator. And with one of those strips added in, it's still a little bit loose. So we'll add a piece of heat shrink, not to shrink, just to have in between the other layers of insulators, which finally gives us a good fit. So it's time to figure out how to arrange everything on our bracket. This is all spaced up from the table about an inch, which is how much space we're going to leave between the main mount and this skid plate thing. The fuel pump will be bolted down to the bottom rung here. The regulator setup is easily accessible without even removing the plate and we'll have plenty of room to fit a 90 degree barb fitting on the inlet and outlet of the pump. They're not exactly ideal for flow, but I imagine for our setup won't be an issue. We'll also be mounting a fuel filter to the bracket, because why not? This particular unit is rated at 20 microns, which is definitely on the restrictive side for a pre-pump filter, but it's what I had on hand, so for now it's what we're using. That's the general plan for our components, but to mount them we're going to have to drill a bunch of holes, both in the bracket as well as the rock guard, so that we can actually bolt everything together. With that assembled and mounted back on the car, I decided there was a little too much space between the fuel pump and the gas tank, so we'll cut into each side of the bracket, fold it up, and weld that back solid. I also decided to add a bar straight down the center, just because. I didn't bend that center one, so it looks a little bit funny, but you can see how much of an angle we gave it. That little bend definitely helped us tuck everything closer into the gas tank, but there is still enough room to access the fuel pump without removing the entire bracket. And even though the rock guard fits as is, there are a few tweaks I want to make. First, we'll do some hammering to open up the angle beyond 90 degrees, then we'll sand off all the paint, and with some cutting and hammering, reshape the whole thing to make it look a bit nicer and add strength. With that bolted in place, it seems like it should do a fine job of protecting the fuel pump from rocks and road debris and whatever might get kicked its way. But it also does leave room around everything for airflow, hopefully enough to keep the pump adequately cooled. We'll take everything back apart and get the bare steel parts bedlined, and while those are drying, get to work on tapping into the fuel feed from the gas tank. The first thing we'll do is construct a Jenga tower to support the tank as we remove the passenger side strap to give us a bit more room and better access to the fuel line. With the location carefully chosen, we'll get a tubing cutter in there, and then a flaring bar. But despite trying every trick I had, I could not get that bar to bite into the stainless steel tubing, so I wasn't able to add any kind of a barb end to it. As with many other things, I'd like to revisit this someday, but for now, we'll just use a long piece of fuel hose with a plethora of clamps bearing down on it. I would rather have it look silly with four hose clamps than leak with one. That's like a proverb or something. Between that and the fact that it's on the inlet side of the fuel pump, I really don't see that ever going anywhere or leaking, but of course we'll have to keep an eye on it. And once the gas tank has been fully reattached to the car, it's finally time to assemble our fuel pump module for good. That means bolting on the filter and pump, installing the inlet fitting as well as a short section of hose between it and the filter, 
followed by the outlet fitting and installing a sealed connector on the fuel pump wires. With those protected and secured, we can pop in our mounting grommets and, hopefully for the last time, bolt the bracket to the body of the car. With all three mounts reasonably tight, we'll cut the inlet hose to length and attach it to the fuel filter. Finally, we'll add a long piece of hose to the outlet of the fuel pump and run that into a two gallon gas tank so that we can test the system. We've got the battery from the car hooked up to a toggle switch. The pump primed in just a few seconds, and while it isn't exactly quiet, it's at least not completely screaming, and it definitely flows very well. That was about 72 seconds to fill the 2 gallon can, which comes out to 1.66 gallons per minute or 100 gallons per hour. That's pretty respectable, I'd say that rating is pretty spot on. For test number 2, which I'm calling Operation Infinite Loop, I really just want to listen to the pump running some more. I mean, it's not quiet. Sitting in the car, still quite noticeable. I can feel vibration here, but not here, so all this isolation is doing something. And we're still missing a major component. Let's go ahead and bolt on the rock guard and see if that changes the sound level. It does seem to somewhat, but I'm still not a fan. Uh, peaceful silence. But there is still one last thing I'd like to try, and that's good old-fashioned sound deadener, in this case, Dynamat. After applying these two pieces to the inside of the guard, there is a noticeable change of volume. That totally made a difference. You sure still hear it, though. And after running with the pump deadheaded, there is also a noticeable fuel leak. That thread sealer didn't have enough time to set, and it also may have just been because that mineral oil was still in the threads, it's just gonna Teflon tape that. We'll go ahead and reseal the outlet and inlet fittings with Teflon tape, which seems to do the job as we have no more leaks after that. Our final noise reduction attempt will be one piece of dynamat on the front of the gas tank right next to the fuel pump and another on the body of the car directly above it. To my ears, that is significantly quieter. You can still hear it, but it is way better. For an external fuel pump and what this car is, I feel like it's a totally acceptable volume level, which is good because I'm pretty much out of ideas anyway. Somewhere down the line, it would be nice to have a fuel hard line going around the gas tank to the fuel pump module, but for right now, we're just gonna run a regular hose with some heat wrap around it where it's closest to the exhaust. For now, this setup will get the fuel pump connected to the factory steel hard line just fine. And while we're at it, we'll put some heat wrap on the other end of the line where it runs right next to the headers. Even with the small block, this line was always close to exhaust heat, but I figure it might be getting even hotter now, so we may as well do what we can to keep the fuel cool. And that about does it for the fuel system. Of course, later we'll have to wire the pump in, but we'll try to do all that electrical work at once and get it over with as quickly as possible. Ah, that's a hole in the shirt. You see the care that went into this display? There's a washer counterbalancing the fuel filter, so it'll sit like that. Oh, I touched it. Oh god, that's a 10 mil. We're in for about a minute, 12 seconds. Oh. Sure does keep coming out of that line with a good amount of force after you turn it off, turns out. That's noticeably quieter. If the thunder would stop, you could probably hear it. 